Welcome to episode 67 for Gaming Dad 101, a show for gamers that became dads and are now looking for cheat codes. If you're new to Gaming Dad 101, this show goes live each and every single Wednesday on podcast services everywhere. Please make sure to go ahead and subscribe and go ahead and rate us because that gets us more listeners and subscribing gets the episodes directly to your device and you get the notifications. Make sure to go ahead and share this with all your friends. You also can check us out over on a Facebook group at facebook.com backslash gaming data 101. Uh, so feel free to go ahead and check us out on this week's episode. Joining me is Ricky. What's going on, everybody? So, Ricky, we're back. It's another week. That's we're right. testing something out new in video. I can't wait to essentially the housekeeping for this week is we we've been announcing video. We're building up to releasing video. The video is going to be in, you're going to see the beginning videos are not going to be as great quality. They're, we're going to keep improving them and we're improving them little by little as we go to where if you're seeing this video, we have a new feature. So we're very excited. Mm-hmm. To test it out. We're checking out how it looks and hopefully it looks great. So if you want to go check it out soon, ladies and gentlemen, soon, I promise you it's coming within the next week or two. So with that said, Ricky, what have you been up to? What have you been playing? What have you been doing? We barely talked this week, so I'm actually like interested. Yeah. Um, not that I'm not always interested. I'm always interested. <laughs> just want to make it clear. It's just this week in particular, I don't know much about what's going on. No, yeah, it's been a it's been a fun week. Um, my girls had the flu, both of them. I believe I talked briefly about it um, on the last episode, or at least that they were sick. Yeah, they were like two weeks ago. You talked about one of them being really sick. So I'm glad to hear that they're better. Yeah, um, yeah. Well, at the end, they ended up both getting the flu. Uh, they're almost done with their medicine, so I'm happy about that. Um, the other day, uh, we were having breakfast over the weekend, and uh, the wife went ahead, and uh, I had made some bacon, some eggs, and all that. Great breakfast. Um, you forget yeah. the coffee, but I'll forgive you. Yeah, well, she had the coffee. I had orange juice. So um, she has she better breakfasts breakfast. than you. Got it. Pretty much. Okay. <laughs> so I only had made a limited amount of uh, bacon in the morning because I just didn't feel like making the whole uh, thing of bacon like I normally do because I love bacon. I'm a, I'm a bacon addict, but uh, I'm trying to <laughs> trying to cut back, you know. So I, I only ended up making like half the pack. And uh, my oldest one, she goes and steals one of the bacons from my from the wife. <laughs> <laughs> and okay. my, my wife goes like you know what i hope you pooped the whole entire bacon and she she wanted her bacon she was like serious about her bacon so uh i hope here. you poop the whole entire bacon <laughs> that's like there's petty and then there's like petty no yeah she got she got that's, she that's, got petty okay. with it. she right. got petty with it and then but that's not even the funny part though Wait, the hold on. There's part. more to it, and this oh, is yeah. none of this is the funny part. Nah, the right. funny part is that this ha- again, this happened like around nine, ten thirty in the morning. You know, it was uh, by this time now. It's almost close to bedtime, so it's been almost ten, twelve hours. You know, since all of that commotion happened early in the morning, um, and then my daughter goes and uses the bathroom. She had a she had to go poop and everything. And out of nowhere, my daughter just comes out of the bathroom. It's like, Mommy, you can now go get your bacon. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> that was so classic. I started laughing okay, so then. hard. Because <laughs> I did not expect for her to actually remember that comment that the wife had made. And for her to come out of nowhere 10 hours later and say, Mommy, you cannot go pick up your bacon. I, w- I, I, I had to give it to her. We couldn't even yell at her or anything. It was just that funny. Dude, you're here, you're here telling me the story. And I know that for a fact you have to be telling it because it's got some ridiculous ending. <laughs> and even then, <laughs> I don't think I can quite comprehend how, how surprised I was. <laughs> How old is she again? She's only five. Oh lord. We should make Run a we, we should make a, a section on the show. Kids say the darnest things and just rip off the name, and then just list all the crazy random things our kids basically say. Kids say the ram- the, the, the ramdest things and then like put up big parentheses. Please don't sue us. <laughs> but yeah, nah. nah um, <laughs> 
<laughs> and then uh, another funny story. Oh, Lord. I told you, man, before we started, I had a couple funny stories. <laughs> this this one is a little, it, it kind of like creeped me out. It, it made me feel a little uncomfortable because uh, prior to recording today's episode, um, I had, before I got to, to where I'm at right now, to the house, I stopped at a Whataburger to get some, you know, get some myself some dinner um, mm-hmm. after work. And I'm in the drive-thru, I order my food, I, I get to the drive-thru window, you know, I, you know, I give them my card, and as soon as the, you know, the person gives me my drink, she looks at me and tells me, so, can I tell my boss that you punch me in the face so I can go home? What? I'm like, uh, <clears throat> no, I'm not Ooh. trying to go to jail. And she looks at me with, like, this dead serious face, and it's like... No, I I am dead serious. Can I tell that to my boss? I'm like, okay, that that. You should turn around and be like, no, I'm dead serious. No, <laughs> not. Now my response to that was just like, um, I I'm pretty sure you've had a bad day. That that bad, huh? <laughs> 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 okay. She I mean, completely caught yeah. me off guard with that, but uh. But yeah, no, the, those those basically have been my stories of. So if nothing else, amazing. your week has been very interesting, huh? Pretty yes, pretty much. Um, then when it comes to gaming wise, I attempted to play the demo for um, Anthem, mm-hmm. but uh, again, over the weekend was pretty hectic. So I I honestly didn't even get to read through half the stuff, and I honestly didn't even play the whole demo. But I dabbled on it. Um, I do like the flying feature that I was able to test out at least that little bit. Did you? Yeah, I tested it out. Um, so I played a little bit too. I'm not too fond of the flying feature. Really? Yeah. Well, I, well, um, did you play it for a lot longer? You probably played it a lot longer than I did though. Um, I, I kind of doubt it. My weekend was kind of... For lack of a better word, my week was a clusterfuck. Um... <laughs> So with that said, I think I played it roughly an hour, hour and a half at the most. Oh, yeah, you, you, I only gave it like five minutes. <laughs> oh, fair. So my the deal that I had with it is they weren't very clear. <clears throat> Either they weren't very clear or I just didn't read it. Um, and the instructions as to how to fly. So it took me a minute to figure it out. And then when I figured it out, of course, I'm having a lot of fun. And the biggest thing I've been saying from the beginning, what I wanted to check out is this seems like an Iron Man simulator. So essentially, my point is, hell yeah, I'm going to fly all over the place. But then <laughs> your engines overheat and you will drop from the sky. So, oh, really? Yeah. So like they overheat far. and it doesn't matter how far <laughs> you are, it's straight down to the floor. Really? So, oh, yeah. And then you have to wait for them to cool down so that you can fly again and all of this. And I I can't honestly give it a fair assessment in terms of how I would like it and whether I would recommend it simply because of everything else that I was going on that was going on through this weekend. I'm not even gonna pretend. Everything bled into everything. And it wasn't necessarily good. So I had kind of a rough weekend, like I mentioned, it's kind of a clusterfuck. <clears throat> and because of that, I think I might have been judging it a little bit unfairly. And at the same time, I mean, I was supposed to play with you. I was supposed to play with Ray from Control C. We, we we had all these plans to like play throughout the weekend to test it and check it out. And because of everything, I didn't even get to. So part of me thinks it would have been a lot more fun to play with you, to play with Ray, uh, to play with anybody else rather than just be me kind of flying around. But I will say it's beautiful. It looks like a gorgeous game. Um, one thing that I haven't seen in other games before, and anybody listening out there, feel free to correct me. It's they had a colorblind filters so that for people that are, you know, colorblind for different colors, they actually have specific filters for you so that you could actually see the game the way it's meant to be seen. Hmm, okay. Um, I have seen a feature for color or for color blindness on other games, but not on every single one of them, but I have seen it before. So I found that really cool. Um, I'm very interested. I'm very interested to see. Now, full disclosure to um, you guys, if you guys remember Tanner, our event coordinator, um, unfortunately he will no longer be able to event coordinate with us because ironically enough, he just got hired at Bioware. So 
Danner. I haven't said it on the show because I didn't know what I could and couldn't say. You told me that I'm okay to say that you work at Bioware, but I can't say anything you're doing. Granted, the good news is for anybody at Bioware who may see this, he hasn't told me shit. So <laughs> I think actually he told me what game he's in, but he told me what game he's working on after clearing that he could tell family. So that's why I know. But anyway, regardless, point is he just got a job at Bioware. So full disclosure, I I, I probably won't be giving you too many ex you know too much info on it simply because of that. But I'm very much looking forward to seeing how it plays. Uh, I'm very much looking forward to uh, giving it a shot when I'm in the right mindset. Yeah. So, now, let's go ahead and get into the first segment of the show. And as you guys remember, last week we renamed this segment. So, Ricky, tell us the reasons why we're going to go broke. <laughs> Dude, um, I like it. I'm sorry. I think it's just funny. Hey, <laughs> whatever makes you happy. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say something else, but I remember what kind of show we do, and I got to keep it uh, polite. <laughs> yeah. yeah, please do. Please do. Nah. Um, no, but starting off uh, during the week, we had uh, a train Odyssey uh, Nexus came out for the 3DS on February the 5th. We had the Occupation come out for the PS4, Xbox One, and PC on February the 6th. We had the Walking Dead game uh, come out for the PS4 and Xbox One on February the 6th. We have Total War Three Kingdoms for that came out on PC only on February the 7th. We have uh, Blaze Blue Central Fiction coming out for the Switch on February the 7th. We got God Eater 3 finally coming out for the PS3 and PC. Um, well, Jesus Christ, PC, PS3 really. PS4, <laughs> PS4. It's okay, Ricky. You're living in classics. It's it happens. Yes. Uh, but yeah. And then we have uh, Monster Energy uh, Supercross Two uh, coming on PS4. Xbox that sounds like it should be Switch. sponsored by Monster Energy Drink. I know, right? Just saying. Monster. It's like Energy. extreme. Yeah. But yeah, coming out for the PS4, Xbox One, Switch, and PC on February the eighth. Sweet. All right, now that we know the reasons why we're going to be going broke, let's go ahead and get into the news. And the first article is an article over on TechSpot, uh, owned by Eric Hamilton, and it's that Sony apparently has filed a new patent that seems to be for the PlayStation 5 and also seems to hint that it will be backwards compatible. And here's the kicker, Ricky, and here's the part that is amazing. And God, I hope this rumor is true. You have no idea how much I hope this rumor is true. Backwards compatibility all the way to the original PSX. Yeah. All right. To the original PlayStation 1. God, I hope so. You have I hope no so idea. I don't care whether it's physical or whether it's digital only or whatever the case, but one machine that could play them all, that's, that's all I want. Like, even if I have to still buy Sony versus Xbox versus PC, to have one machine that could play everything within that library would be amazing. And I still don't understand why they haven't done it. And it would be a great cash cow. So let's go ahead and I want to read one, one specific part of the article. Uh, quote, the patent is designed by PlayStation 4 lead architect Mark Cerny and would theoretically allow the PlayStation 5 to run software from legacy devices, that is PS4, PS3, PS2, and the vulnerable PS1. The feat would be facilitated by tricking the legacy software into believing it's running on the original device. A process the patent details as, quote, processor ID spoofing. It would mimic the behavior of older hardware to allow the legacy software to cooperate with newer hardware. The PlayStation 3 architecture is known to be particularly tricky to work with, which is likely why Sony has stalled with backwards compatibility. So, I mean... Everybody knows why I'm excited. I don't think I need to say how much I love PlayStation. But dude, tell me this isn't amazing. I mean, first of all, about damn time, Sony. About friggin' time. Because I can almost guarantee you that the Xbox is going to have that. Whether PlayStation puts that in or not, we already know PlayStation is at least backwards compatible through the 360. There is no reason for them to not make sure that their next system continues to be backwards compatible, considering how much goodwill that brought them. I think this is PlayStation catching up, seeing the feedback that has come back with Xbox doing what they did. Is it something you care about, Ricky? Or like, 
I hope I'm not the only one excited. <laughs> no, I'm actually excited for it. Um, for me, the way that I think this actually might work out would probably be just like the Xbox is doing it right now. They'll probably give you physical copies to be backwards compatible with the prior generation, so probably with the PS4. And then everything else might actually have to be digital unless they want to go all the way up to the route where they allow you to actually play PS4 and PS3 physical games and then PS2 and back um, just digital. And I believe that part of the way that they got around that is that if you had the physical copy for an Xbox game, when you put it in, you were able to download the digital copy and your CD acted as the key for the new software, I believe is what they were able to manage the first time. Um, I will actually be able to try it out. I do have some games for the Xbox that I have the physical copy for that I can try that out. But at this moment, I'm, I don't know 100%, to be honest. Fair enough. Well, if anybody knows out there, please make sure to give us a ring and uh, let us know. Now, I'm going to go ahead and move on to the next article. This article is over for The Verge, and this one is also very exciting. And it's like, this week, not many news, but the ones that we did get, pretty freaking cool. Microsoft is apparently preparing, preparing to bring Xbox Live to iOS, Android, and the Nintendo Switch. So this article is over by Tom Warren. I'm going to go ahead and read the whole thing. Microsoft is getting ready to release an important software development kit that will allow game developers to integrate Xbox Live into any titles that run across PC, Xbox, iOS, Android, and Nintendo Switch. This was spotted by uh, Windows Central at GDC Central reveals that Microsoft will announce its cross-platform push for Xbox Live next month. So my OS and Android games already have Xbox Live achievements, but they only enabled in titles from Microsoft Studios, and there's not many of them available right now. Microsoft describes this new push as much bigger. Xbox Live is expanding from 4 million gaming devices and a reach to over 68 million active players to over 2 billion devices with the, re with the release of our new cross-platform XDK. So, we already knew that Xbox has been playing very friendly with Nintendo, so I'm not too surprised about this. I am surprised that it's including everything else, but not necessarily shocked. What about you? No, I'm not shocked, but it is it is exciting. I will say nonetheless, it is it is exciting. Um, how they're going to integrate all this into all of the different softwares and what kind of games are actually going to be allowed uh, to be able to be played uh, through this cross-play, it's going to be very interesting. <clears throat> well, and then that's the thing. I mean, they mentioned achievements, but here's... For some reason, in my mind, I have this whole, like, it's going to start with Xbox Live, and it's going to progress mm -hmm. to cross play and it's going to progress to like games pass and that's kind of what i'm excited about I, I like the fact that they're playing well together i like the fact that they're working so closely together i wish playstation would join in on the fun everybody loves a threesome <laughs> but <laughs> that aside um it's just nice to see them getting out of their shell and finally start to cooperate with with each other. You know what I mean? So I'm very oh, yeah. excited to see what ends up coming out of it. Uh, I'm I'm freaking excited as well. I mean, Xbox uh, Xbox is gonna take over, man. I think Xbox is gonna be on top. You think this, so? I I mean, the way that they're doing things now, integrating Xbox Live to other consoles, you know, handhelds, even mobile. Hmm. <laughs> Hmm, do you think that uh, with with this, do you think there might be some kind of a partnership down the road between Nintendo and Xbox? Oh, yeah. I mean, they already have it. I mean, they, they no, have like, already. No, like more than what it is now. Like, oh, yeah. let's create a console, me and you together. Hmm. Uh. <laughs> well, I will bring it back to, I want to say two episodes ago. I believe it was two episodes ago, we discussed how there was an interview with the new president of Nintendo, and in that interview, he stated that they may not be in hardware forever. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That they were looking at ways to make sure that Nintendo was able to survive going forward, but that doesn't seem to necessarily have to include the hardware feature. So could I possibly see... 
Xbox partnering up with Nintendo and coming out with a hybrid box, and that's where you get your Nintendo titles, unfortunately for PlayStation, yeah, I totally see it. Simply because they're working so well together. PlayStation has had their head up their behinds for God knows how long at this point. I love PlayStation, believe me, but I'm going to be the first one to call them out. They, they've been dumb. They've been really, really dumb with this. And they segregated themselves to the point where now Nintendo's kind of in bed with Xbox. And let's face it, this is a real possibility. I, I'd like to think that it's a real possibility. Not anytime soon. Definitely oh, no, yeah, not no. anytime soon. But the fact that they're working together, if this relationship continues to nurture and they continue to be able to rely on each other, there is no reason why so whatsoever why there wouldn't be an Xbox that would come out and that is and that is where you play your Nintendo games. And that would be the way that Xbox has me purchasing an, an Xbox guaranteed. You know, I've been talking about how I've been, you know, next generation, I probably will likely get an Xbox, especially if they come out with like a digital only uh, Xbox that's cheaper, uh, simply because that would appeal to me because I don't, I wouldn't play that system as much. But you tell me now that there's this box and you can play all the Microsoft games and that you can also play on Nintendo games. And guess what? Chris is buying himself at least two of them. <laughs> one for myself and probably one for my kid. And just let's be realistic. So, yeah, I, that'd be exciting, dude. Like, <laughs> Because, I mean, honestly, like you just stated, you know, two episodes ago, like Nintendo has already said they don't really care about making home consoles. It doesn't mean that xbox can make it on their behalf <laughs> sorry we got we got chris uh pointing for those out. of you that are going to check out the video eventually Jesus. i'm basically pointing out to my switch that's right behind me but yeah no but i can see it to where nintendo says you know what you handle all the logistics for the actual console we'll just handle the licensing for the titles so yep. that can that can be a great possibility, and I'm very excited if that actually does happen. <laughs> uh, oh yes. Now I'm curious. So if you're a listener to the show, go over to our Facebook group. Tell us what you think. Would you be interested in that? Because now I'm curious. What other ideas do you have? Because I kind of really like th I like this this thought. You know, game. I. Damn it, Ricky! Now I'm excited <laughs> for an Xbox. <sighs> And I always, I always hoped that that partnership would happen with PlayStation, but I, I I'm, it's sad to it, say that it realistically, did. it's probably not going to. It did at one point, but PlayStation screwed it over. Unfortunately, that's not accurate. Actually, Nintendo's the one who screwed PlayStation over. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. So, and um, then some I think of these I... details I may not remember correctly, but essentially, Nintendo was working with PlayStation to come up with their um, their disk drive. They were the ones who were developing the 64DD, if any, if that recalls for anybody. The 64DD was going to be a CD-ROM drive that attached to the bottom of the N64 console. That way you could play um, discs, like games on disc. Unfortunately, something happened. I exactly can't remember what. Where Nintendo, behind PlayStation's back, went to Panasonic, I believe it was, to develop something else because I think Panasonic would have been cheaper or something. And they came out, and without PlayStation being aware, they came out and announced the partnership with Panasonic and basically slapped Sony in the face. So what did Sony do? They turned their R&D for Nintendo system, and that became the PlayStation. Gotcha. Yeah, no, right now I'm looking at the original concept. They have, like, a Super Nintendo controller with the PlayStation name on it. And it looked like an old uh, floppy disk DOS kind of system. Oh, yeah, so, no, they were hideous. The dev kits yeah. back then were hideous. Yeah, it's ugly as heck, but they at least made it as far as a prototype console. So, which, nonetheless, they had, they had the opportunity, so... We'll see what happens now if it's Xbox gonna be interesting. Gets, yeah, if Xbox gets that opportunity, not only Nintendo is gonna go up bumping because Nintendo right now, unfortunately, for the last several years, for the last several generations, they haven't been able to keep up with technology wise. So if this partnership actually ever goes that way, dude, oh just my I just God. I didn't even think of that. Just on a technological level, yeah, you know what I mean. Like right now, <clears throat> the Xbox One X is supposed to be the most powerful console out there. And technically, it has better processing power than the PS4 Pro. So, 
can you imagine again we go back to can you imagine Nintendo <laughs> games on like next gen all right let's let's move on. <laughs> it's very let's, exciting particularly this game zelda yeah that game mm. uh-huh. mm-hmm. and on the unreal engine i think you saw that yeah oh i saw that yeah i've, I've seen yeah. that i've seen it on like, unreal 3 and then unreal 4 it's gorgeous mm-hmm. all right so moving on to the last article of the week uh <laughs> This one's over on Eurogamer by Emma Kent. The world thinks we're making Titanfall 3, and we're not. This is what we're making. It's now official. Respawn's been quietly working on a free-to-play first-person shooter battle royale called Apex Legends, and it's already available for players to download. Although many of the game's details have been splashed across the internet, there's still plenty here to discuss, including how the game actually plays, monetization, and what this means for the Titanfall franchise. At a closed-door event last week, I was able to to trial Apex Legends for a full six hours and ask Respawn a number of questions about his decision to go full battle royale. So... This uh, article is, of course, a lot lengthier than what I am going to read on the episode, but go over and give your gamer that read because it is a very interesting article. Um, mm-hmm. It made me really sad because I was very much looking for Titanfall 3. I don't think I was needing it right away. I don't think I was one of those players that was like, man, I need my Titanfall now, simply because Titanfall 1 didn't create that big a splash. Titanfall 2 was a great improvement, but it still had a lot of work to be done. So I kind of want them to take their time with Titanfall 3 and actually deliver something that has a lot of substance, simply because I enjoyed Titanfall 2, and it it was almost a really good game. It played very well. It was very comfortable. I enjoyed, you know, zipping lining, zip lining across the map, jumping on my Mac, jumping out of my Mac, all everything was awesome, but it needed more substance. So by all means, take all the time you need. But I'm more interested. Are you going to check out this Apex? Because it sounds pretty freaking sweet. I mean, I don't mind checking it out, especially since it's a free-to-play game. Um, But full disclosure, I only play um, Titanfall, the first one. Um, I honestly didn't like it at all. So, yeah, the first one I didn't like because the way that, at least the way that they did the story, I just didn't appeal for me because one moment I'm the good guy. Then once I'm done with the good guy story, now I'm the bad guy doing the same exact mission just from the other point of view. And I'm like, okay, no, yeah, no, I, I got bored really quickly. So yeah. to be honest, I never gave Titanfall 2 a chance. Um, this one, since it is a free to play game, I don't mind checking it out and, you know, giving it a, giving them a, my rating to see how <laughs> they actually go. The um, all coveted Ricky Picky Gamer Dad rating. That's right. Um, <laughs> yeah, because for what I understand with this one is that they're going to go ahead and base it off 30 years after the events of what happened on Titanfall 2. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I mean, I've, I've heard I've heard that they have good sustenance on that they've balanced out this game pretty well. So I heard that the balancing on the game is really good. Um, I do understand that they removed the actual megs out of the the game. They removed the multiple jumps, the double jump and the triple jumps. Ooh, um, ooh. Yeah, so there's a lot of mechanics from the actual core Titanfall that was actually removed from this one. But I don't know. We'll, we'll see what happens. We'll check it out. So if anybody's going to check out this game or has checked out this game and has in, anything to say about it, any sort of review, please hit us up over in a Facebook group. Let us know. We'd like to talk about it. And if you do, we'll, might, we may just read it on the show. So with that said, we're actually coming to the end of the show. This week was uh, unfortunately a short week. But... Before we leave, we have what we call a parenting cheat code of the week. This week's cheat code was actually written by Ricky. So, Ricky, take it away. Uh, side effects might include. <laughs> I like I like the, the, the narrator voice. Side effects might include nausea, vomiting, <laughs> that same thing you're taking the medication for. Yes, but this go around, let's actually include uh, hallucinations um, to those side effects. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, so one of, like I was mentioning, um, both of my daughters ended up coming out, coming down with the flu. Um, my nieces also came down with the flu, so Fine. It, this was just a family, you know, event of everybody getting the flu. <laughs> 
Now, I know that we may have different traditions because we're from different places, but I don't think getting sick is a good one, Ricky. <laughs> that, that's, <laughs> no, let's it's keep, not. Let's keep that tradition away. No, it's not. Um, but what I, what I wanted to say by this, uh, whenever we honestly didn't even read the side effects just because we're so numb to actually, at least I am, I can't speak for everybody. I'm so numb to it. I'm like, okay, here's the medicine we were given. This is what we have to do. Let's follow the, the prescription of how many times we have to give it to them and whatnot. But uh, I guess the medicine was just a little strong for one of my nieces that in the middle of the night, she wakes up starting talking about, mommy, why are people staring at me? They keep staring at me. They won't stop staring at me. Can you tell them to stop? Can you protect oh, wow. me? So yeah, she just started, she, apparently she was looking up to the ceiling and just stating that she was just having people just like stare at her the whole time. And she was getting not lethargic. But, I feel like we should have some Twilight Zone music playing in the background or something. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, so again, just make sure that you're reading what kind of side effects, you know, you, the kids may have from different medicines that you might have to give them due to their whatever their necessities are if they are sick you know they have the flu whatever <clears throat> because if at least in our case you know it it really caught us completely off guard like we started panicking freaking out like what the heck is going on and then once we actually read the side effects like okay you know this this is something that can happen so we were able then you know to move forward from there but when it just blindsides you and you're not expecting it it was freaking scary man so i'm gonna piggyback off of yours and i'm gonna add check the expiration date because i have an as an adult <laughs> i've actually taken medication that has for lack of a better term made me trip balls anyway <laughs> simply because it had expired and i had no idea um I am one of those people that sadly I will buy medication like when I get sick, put it away in the medicine drawer, forget all about it, never check it, get sick again, go get it, take it, and then after check it. Um, so yeah, I uh, I can totally <laughs> check the side effects, check the expiration date too, because yeah. yeah, yeah, that's it's it's it's, it's something yeah. that's for sure. So it ain't nothing good. Pay, just let's something. just pay more extra attention to. Uh, what we're giving our kids for now on. <laughs> for real. And yourself. Um, so, with that being said, now that we've covered the cheat code, is there anything you want to recommend for this week? Anything that you want people to check out? Anything that you saw that, that's been pretty cool? Uh, I'm personally going to, and this is, it's a weird show for me to pimp out, I feel, but it's really freaking good. I've been watching Gracie, Grace and Frankie on Netflix. Really freaking good. It's hilarious starts very slow, but it, it picks up. I don't know. It's a guilty pleasure of mine. Don't sue me. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. if, if you look at it, you, you'll kind of see it and you're like, really? You watch this show? And it's like, yeah, I watch it. <laughs> right? I watch it. I enjoy it. No. Uh, for my side, uh, I would recommend, you know, plenty of sleep. <laughs> I... <laughs> <laughs> get your beauty sleep um i have Trying gone to say something. <laughs> well this weekend for me was was kind of one of those that i just went going to bed like at three three in the morning you know all weekend long even for no reason at times just and now i'm kind of paying for it because i can't go to sleep on time now and i'm just like tired <laughs> back to the whole look at your side effects i recommend melatonin <laughs> I'm not a pill popper kind of guy. It's a natural supplement. I don't like taking pill period. You can get them in gummies. <laughs> they get stuck in my teeth. <laughs> <laughs> That's why they have dentists, Ricky. Anyway. So. That's why I don't go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so with that, thank you for joining us on episode 67 for Gaming Dad 101. Remember, once again, that Gaming Dad 101 will go live each and every single Wednesday on podcast services all over the world. Remember, that video is coming soon. And remember to check us out over at our website at geekandcast.com for this and other shows. Check out also our Twitter at geekandcast. You can follow me on Twitter at VizkaZen. It should say it's somewhere down here. And you should follow Ricky over at Picky Gamer Dad. It says it's somewhere right there. And uh, thank you very much for joining us, guys. We'll see you next Wednesday. Luego.